Meteorologist Edward Lorenz came up with the theory that a small change in a nonlinear system can cause a larger difference of state at a later stage. It's called the butterfly effect. And it's the idea that something as trivial as a flap of a butterfly wing can cause a storm to appear on the opposite side of the hemisphere. While Lorenz was talking about weather patterns, modern culture has taken the concept and adapted it to understand our everyday interactions and actions. So let me break this down in simple terms. A small change, a seemingly small change in the present can cause a larger difference down in the, later in our lives. The butterfly effect is something that just happens naturally. It appears and it just occurs. One example is thinking about the connection between our minds and our bodies. And so there are dynamic processes behind neurotransmission that are the backbone of our behavioral, social, and neural systems. In our neurological system, when there's a slight imbalance, the body wants to shift. So a low dopamine expression in the short term causes you to be groggy and tired, but that slight manifestation can cause it to be a cascade chain of events, disrupting your healthy cognition in the future. And you may have not even expected it initially. But what interests me the most about the butterfly effect are the social and spiritual implications it has for us. So in my opinion, there are three things that the butterfly effect can teach us. One, that the universe opens doors for us. Two, that sometimes we're able to make choices that change the courses of lives. And three, most importantly, that we have the power to influence and impact even on a seemingly small scale. So number one, how has the universe placed opportunities in my life? Two years ago, I was able to go to Hawaii, and I surfed in the Pacific waves, and I rode a horse for the first time, and I saw one of the prettiest sunsets that I've ever seen in my life. I've captured it in my mind, and I try to dig it out like a time capsule. But this isn't going to be a plug for all the reasons why you should go to Hawaii for your next vacation. On the last day of my family vacation, we decided to go to a coffee shop called Coffee Talk in Kaimuki, Honolulu. Coffee Talk seemed to be the hub of the town, attracting tourists like us, but also buzzing with regulars. The energy was absolutely impeccable. The shop was decked out with local artist paintings, neon electric signs, and a chalkboard menu with not only a colorful design on it, but with a various array of flavored coffees, fresh baked pastries, and the best butter mochi you can get. As my family and I were wrapping up to head back to the airport, the same lady who had given us our coffees came to grab our plates. And this woman had blonde hair that seemed to be naturally lightened by the ocean water. She had a simple outfit with white flowy pants, and she had one of the warmest smiles that I had ever seen. And she asked us where we were from as if our outfits didn't give away the fact that we were definitely not from the area. And quickly I learned that her name was Liz, and that she was the owner of this coffee shop who had moved from New York to Hawaii 20 years ago on a whim, with no set plan. She explained to me that she had gone to Hawaii, fell in love with what it had to offer, and she booked a one-way ticket. That entire trip changed the entire trajectory of her entire life. Liz then changed her line of questioning to ask me what my plans were as a college student, and I gave her the spiel that I'm a neuroscience major, planning to maybe go to law school after graduation, but honestly, I'm still assessing my possible options. And after a brief 10-minute, 20-minute conversation, which was wonderful, she looked at me and she said, Mabel, I have an offer for you. If you ever change your mind, I would love to open a second coffee shop, and with your help, I could open it in Long Island. Please reach out to me whenever. That one conversation opened doors that I never knew could exist for me. I'd like to think that the universe places deliberate opportunities. And now one option that I have, a product of the butterfly effect, is having the possibility of opening my own coffee shop and living what it seems like an opening scene from a romance novel. I want to take a moment to ask you, 
Where have you felt the butterfly effect appear in your own life? Perhaps was it when you bumped into somebody who became a lifelong best friend after a coincidental encounter? Was it a significant moment that marked a major transformation in your life later down the road? Or did you look at a job bulletin board and find the perfect opportunity right before your eyes? In those moments, they may have seemed trivial and minute, but how have they opened doors for you? Number two, the butterfly effect may make it seem like, oh, it's impossible to pick and choose who or what we run into. But I like to think that sometimes we have more control in what we think and what we do. So how do we play a role in controlling what we walk into? When I was seven years old, I found out a key piece of information that marked my identity and answered the very reason why I was here to begin with. I was in my second grade class, and Mrs. Seidel, she gave us an activity to draw out our immediate family trees. So there I was, taking out my 64-pack Crayola crayons that I had begged my mom for, and I started to color my paper with creativity in my unwavering stare. I drew mom, dad, papa, my brother, and I. Mrs. Seidel then asked us one by one if anyone would like to share, and I waited till most of my peers shared. I was shy growing up. And I heard them say mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, and I even heard about their pets, but no one had mentioned this word, papa. So with utmost confidence, my hand shot straight up, and I explained that there was mom, dad, papa, my brother, and then me. Mrs. Seidel shot me a straight look of confusion as she tried to understand who Papa was. She asked me, are you talking about your grandpa? I thought to myself, he's old, but not that old. So I firmly attested, no. She then asked me, are you talking about your stepfather? And in my little head, I thought, no, he's nothing like the evil stepmother in Cinderella. But most importantly, I felt like my face started to burn fiercely, like bright vermilion, and everyone's gaze was penetrating my soul. And most importantly, I was confused. I didn't have the answers to her questions, and I couldn't understand why my family was so different from others. So seven-year-old Mabel did what she does best and was very determined to get some answers, so she marched home, and I asked Papa, because he was and is still the most chill, so he would tell me anything. And as I sat down on my bed, I asked him, what do I call you in English? I thought to myself with confusion, what is my story? Why don't other kids have two fathers like me? And suddenly he unfolded my life story in a quick few simple sentences. He explained, mom and dad were work friends, your dad was married to somebody else, and they couldn't have a child. So your mom offered to have a child for both of them. Your dad decided to go through a last minute divorce. So mom, dad, and I talked and discussed and thought that we should raise you all together, the three of us. I don't know what you should call me, let's ask your mom. Long story short, my mother married Papa, who I call Godfather for simplicity reasons now, when she was in Nepal, when she was very young. They separately immigrated to the States, and for a period of time, my mother stayed in California with my half-brother, because that's where she envisioned having her own career. After some failed endeavors, she decided to phone a friend up who told her about a job opportunity back in New York where my godfather was staying. And so my mom decided to take a flight back, interviewed for the job position, and she got it. And that's where she met my dad, as they became work friends. And now you know the rest of the story. But ever since then, my three parents have raised me into the woman I am today. When I take a second to reflect and pause now, it's unbelievable to me that my mom's one decision 
to take a simple job offer resulted in the creation of me. She chose to be my surrogate mother. It's crazy to think if she had stayed in California and never met my dad, then perhaps I wouldn't even have been in this world right now. It's surreal to think that if my parents hadn't immigrated to America at all, then how different their lives would be. It's as if every piece of the story has fit to result in the creation of my essence. I wouldn't be experiencing the sweet goodness of life as Mabel right now. I could have very well just been a floating piece of stardust, waiting for my turn to come on Earth. But I like to believe that most of our stories have begun because of the universe's work to bring people together. My previous relationship also bore out of the butterfly effect. I had followed my former partner on Instagram during winter break a year ago. How romantic of a Gen Z population. But quickly after we talked and discussed, he said that he had seen me in an elevator once and that he just didn't happen to know my name, but he was intrigued by me. I like to also believe that somehow the universe connected us. Because it's wild to think if I hadn't taken that right elevator at that right minute, then maybe he may have never seen me. Or if I hadn't chosen to follow him after seeing him tagged in a mutual friend's post, then perhaps we wouldn't know each other the way we do now. I want you to think about those butterfly moments again. How have they changed the entire trajectory of your life? How have they impacted the way you think, reflect, and honestly live going forward? Have they permanently altered the direction of your path? In those moments, they might have seemed trivial and very minute, but they end up developing into our integral plots and life stories. As we take a second to pause and reflect, these moments become exceedingly meaningful. Sometimes they've changed the courses of our entire lives. And I can say that I'm alive because of the choices of others. Bottom line, people have more of a say than we think we do. So what do we do with this going forward, knowing that small interactions matter and that we play a role in influencing decisions? What do we do with this? The effect allows us to understand that there is something bigger to the human experience than just mere sensory experience. We don't just take in the world for what it is. Every single moment and part of the world is constructed, shaped, and impacted by our collective human experience. It's as simple as thinking about a train conductor or a driver. If a train conductor shows up late to their train car, then how many other days, how many other people's days are impacted by their lateness? And the train conductor might have not even realized how much of an impact he was making at that moment. By paying attention to the butterfly effect, as various things are occurring at various time points and have various reasons of purpose, we can actually start to understand how interconnected we may all be. How our threat of actions impact other people's emotions, thoughts, and choices. How our smallest everyday moves create waves of impact at the end of the day. And how that's empowering. How it's empowering to know that we have much more of a say even when we feel like we're floating amongst eight billion other people. And if we understand the brevity and the importance of our small moments, we can bring huge success and fulfillment to our lives. Because our purpose in life doesn't have to be the most earth-shattering endeavor we do. We don't have to feel the weight of all these problems that we have to solve in our world and feel dejected when we haven't reached an overarching goal. But rather, by being mindful of our power in a singular moment, we can affect people on a deeper level than we think. Because if our seemingly smaller actions have such weight in the long term, why don't we focus on those moments? Why don't we celebrate our everyday victories? I certainly don't have it all figured out, but I can start by doing something small. Perhaps it's buying somebody a meal because they need a meal to just get them through the night. Maybe it's being attentive and kind to someone who's having a bad day. 
We never truly know what anyone is going through. So sometimes something as simple as a smile can make someone know that they're worth it. Perhaps being mindful and attentive is not just limited to our relationships and how we treat one another, but it's expansive in how we treat the earth, looking at our consumption and decreasing our wastage accordingly, or planting something simple as like a garden in your backyard that ends up housing several diverse plants, birds, and insects that enrich our planet and our soil. The world may seem vast, but we have the power to have everlasting impressions and touch souls along the way. I'll leave you with a story that highlights the three components of the butterfly effect that I've talked today. A story that comes to mind is of this couple named Aravinda and Ravi, who had been working in the States for a while, but decided to have a project back in India. There's a movie based on them. As they were going back to India, they uncovered this association called the Association of Indian Development. Hence, number one, the opportunity was uncovered. Through this organization, they found out about a village that sat still in darkness every night. They had never had electricity. And it was virtually impossible to have a steady stream of electricity because the nearest national electricity grid was 7.5 miles away. And it was impossible to install a power line because the nearest road for this village was 37 miles away. So the couple could have naturally gotten up and decided everything is simply out of their control. But they decided to stay. And they decided to choose to be mindful of their surroundings. And as they recognized a 30-foot waterfall that divulged into the nearest village's river, they recognized that it could be used to generate electricity. So they created a turbine and a generator, and with the help of a few engineers using a tiny 15-kilowatt generator, this couple provided electricity to each home in this village. Hence, the second thing, sometimes the choices that we have are able to influence the courses of lives. At the moment, the couple could have thought the electricity was the only byproduct of their project, but through their work, this meant that people in the village could draw water more accessibly for irrigation and drinking, that the electricity and the bulbs meant late night study sessions for students for once, and the electricity meant that the cost for kerosene which was used for cooking stoves and lamps, were cut down substantially. From 150 rupees per household, they were now spending about 30 rupees per month. This couple's one decision, one action, amplified the entire development of this village and impacted the people's lives significantly for the time being. Hence, that's the third thing that the butterfly effect teaches us. So yes, this is a pretty big feat and not a very minute endeavor. And the purpose of this story is not for you to hop on the next plane and have a life-saving project, which you could very well do that. But the purpose of the story is to recognize the power of your inspirations, actions, and choices. On the flip side, I could accept Liz's offer from the coffee shop and be fulfilled that I get to have my own shop housing local artist paintings, impacting people with just giving them food and coffee, and honestly speaking to people on a daily basis because they need somebody to talk to. At the end of the day, I'm still influencing people's lives, and I'm still making some sort of impact. So like I said, the purpose of this story is for you to recognize the power of your choices, inspirations, and actions. We all start somewhere different, Opportunities will flow in differently in our lives, and it takes time to see the effect and the blossoming of our actions come into fruition, but we all have the innate potential to be mindful of what we do going forward, understand the impact of our choices, and recognize the extent of the butterfly effect, because what we do or say ends up carrying a lot of weight in this lifetime. So I ask you, what are you going to do now as you recognize the power you hold? Thank you.